Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend's video update. I'm actually recording this on the morning of Saturday, February 27th. Hope everybody had a good week of trading. Uh, let's take a look at the markets. We'll take a look at an update on our day trading and then we'll jump into the alerts and our current portfolio. Uh, to start with, taking a look at the S&P 500, ticker SPX. Uh, just giving you a little bit of a long-term perspective chart going all the way back to uh, pre-2013. I mean, think about, think about this. End of 2013, the S&P was at 1,800. We almost hit 4,000 earlier this year. So a uh, pretty crazy run we've seen overall. Uh, obviously, we had a, a nice sizable dip in that upside run during the whole coronavirus scare. Uh, but then even since then, it's just been up, up, and away with some small blips here and there. And in fact, we are in the middle of one of those small blips. Now, when you're in positions and you're trading, and especially if you have long positions, sometimes a little dip like this feels like the world's coming to an end and the market's crashing, especially if you read the headlines or, or listen to the financial media. But keep in mind, this is, in the big picture, this is right now a pretty small blip. Now, every big blip starts with a small blip, so don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that this couldn't turn into something more. But keep in mind, what we've seen here the last couple of weeks, this is no different than we, what, what we saw a few weeks ago. You know, you can see it's the same, really the same size little, little down move. So the question is, do we just rip up to new highs again like we did last time? Or is there more to it where we see some more downside? If we look at it from a perspective of a, on a percentage basis, I mean, look at the S&P. It was up as much as 6.75% year to date. Uh, now we're still up about 3% year to date. So we've seen a few percent decline and we could certainly see another few percent decline and that would still be nothing but a little blip. You know, a five or 10% correction is pretty normal in a, in a, in a market cycle. And so uh, what are we doing to position ourselves for this? Well, we currently have a little bit less than one to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. And so uh, while we did have some long positions and we, that we had to close out for losses this week, and we did have a couple iron ducks that we got flushed out of, our overall portfolio still grew because of that short delta that we had. Now, as the market moves lower, that short delta amount, it, you know, lowers as well. Our delta neutral positions become a little bit more long delta. We start to add in some more long delta plays uh, and, and we start to you know flush out of some of our short deltas. And so that's just the natural progression. So I, I'm, I'm really good with where our portfolio is positioned. And I just, I bring this up to give you a little bit of our thought process in this, in how this works, because if, if this thing does continue to flush lower, we'll benefit, but we'll get to a point where we're going to actually start getting in a position where our portfolio is a little bit long delta and that's okay as well because then you benefit from a bounce and it's just, it's playing that kind of game of ping pong, but always having a range and always understanding the overall delta that you're carrying in your portfolio and being aware of the overall directional bias that you have. So it's not that everyone needs to be exactly how we are. It's about creating a level of comfort with your portfolio and the positions that you have and maybe needing to add in some long positions or some short positions to balance that overall directional bias. And so uh, I like how we're positioned. We've got a good diversified portfolio, different asset classes and, and, and ticker symbols. And so we'll continue to manage as, as needed. But uh, if, if you're looking for my kind of opinion of where we go from here, I would say we probably bounce. I mean, I, I don't think we're done ripping into new all-time highs. I think this is just a little short-term blip. But at the same time, it wouldn't surprise me either if we saw some more downside on some of these uh, you know, inflation scares and everything else that, that, that's going on and see another 2 3 4 5% drop. Uh, but I would say the most likely scenario is we, we rip back up to new highs. And so that is what we will manage around. But we'll continue to stay mechanical. Uh, if we do see lower prices, we'll continue to add in some long, long, uh, long delta positions, like some of these long call diagonals that we've been doing. We'll be, we'll continue to add in some iron ducks, which start off with a little bit of long delta. And so, we will, uh, we'll continue to uh, manage as needed. So that's the, that's the plan there. Uh, before we jump into the alerts, let's take a look, a quick look at our day trading. Um, actually, let me bring up our trade tracker, uh, trade tracker sheet. 
Uh, we had another good week of day trading, booked a little over $2,500 in profits, which has been pretty consistent with what we've done over the last couple weeks. Uh, so let me, let me widen this out a little bit here for you. So you can see uh, this week was a little rough on the Mighty 90s, had some really big pushes in the market that just kind of that kind of squeezed us on some of our Mighty 90 trades. So only took seven, but our win rate is not where we need it to be. We, we need that to be over 60%. Uh, you can see the average is, is about 65% on our, on our win rate. So we really need to be over 60%. Closer to 70 or 80 is, is better, which we've seen you know, several times. You can see our profits when we get that higher win, per, win percentage. Uh, but this week, a little bit in the red on the mighty 90s, did start jumping into some pair trades, went four for four on our pairs trades for over $1,100 in profit. And then our, uh, our runners continue to be uh, phenomenal, over $3,400 on 27 trades on our runners. So net net, a little over $2,500 on the week. Like I said, that's pretty consistent with, with what we did last week and the week before. Of course, the week before that was a monster, over $5,400, but uh, continue to, to, to book some nice profits. We also cracked the 1,000 trademark, uh, going back to since we've been tracking this on August 31st, and we also cracked the $50,000 level of profit. So good stuff in our day trading. If you haven't had a chance to jump in there yet on our live streams, it's a lot of fun making some money, having fun, so uh, we'll continue to, continue to do that. Uh, all right, jumping into our alerts, starting with Monday, our first trade was a closing trade in Natty Gas, and... Uh, this is a this is a kind of a good uh, lesson of trade, but this is one that um, was a, a short strangle that we put on. It was actually before I can't remember the exact date we first put it on, but put it on before the whole Corona crash, and we and, you know with every asset class just moving like crazy during that period, we kind of got blown out of one side, and so we've just continued to manage mechanically roll up the untested sides, roll out in time to extend duration. And we've worked our way back to profits and finally closed this one out uh, for a nice, uh, a nice profit of over $700 after all adjustments and rolls. So I uh, had a nice contraction in implied volatility over the last couple of weeks, uh, stayed in a, a decent range. It gave us the opportunity to, uh, to book that trade. So it always feels good to close one of those out after you've been kind of managing and rolling for quite a few, uh, quite a ways. And so we are completely out of nat natty gas now. And, uh, and booked a nice profit, and, and implied volatility is, is next to nothing now, so we won't be jumping into any more premium and natty gas anytime soon, but it feels good to, to be out of that one. Next trade, SPX opened up an iron duck, did this one with 14 days to expiration. So if we take a look at SPX, and let's go to our Analyze tab to give you the visual representation. Oops, that's SMH. Uh, SPX. So here's the iron duck that we put on. You can see price with this flush on Thursday and Friday has already come down into the duck head. Uh, this one expires on the 9th, so got some time here. So hopefully it hangs out in our range during that period and we can book a profit. Uh, we've got another uh, get to the weekly double calendar when we get to that alert. So next trade, Twitter did an opening trade and Twitter did a long call diagonal. We've been doing some of these different long call diagonals just to A, add some long delta, add some long bias in our portfolio to help balance against that other short delta. And so Twitter was a good one. Um, you know, and, and with these, they're cool because we're taking very little risk and we're targeting kind of one to one or better where we're trying to get at least 100% uh, profit on these or more. And so let's take a look at Twitter. And where we're at here, so you know, we, we're taking a risk of about 380 bucks on this trade. That's the max, max loss we can take. That's also the capital required to put this trade on. So we can do these very small. And you can see we're already up $243. We're actually up quite a bit more. Uh, but, you know, so what is that? That's about a, oh, 60, 70%. We're already at a 60 or 70% return on capital on this trade. And so when we're looking at when we're looking at ent entering these, we're really looking at trying to jump in to trades that are that are strong. Remember, these are long call diagonals, so they're bullish. We're we're wanting up movement to benefit from these. And so, you know, Twitter announced earnings had a big jump, and then just started pulling back, trading sideways. So we were looking for another continuation in that same direction. So we got into this trade. I think it was on this day here, 
and you can see it's it's really pushed up since then. So that's exactly what we're looking for on these type of trades. So like I said, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at the charts to try to figure out a good timing to enter these trades. But really, if we are within our overall portfolio allocation, if we're in, within our parameters of the range of, of our delta bias that we want to be in, we can really be very flexible in the types of trades and what we put on. And so this is an example of that, just putting on some uh, bullish uh, bullish delta to counteract, counteract our other uh, short delta plays, as well as just take advantage of a price pattern on the charts, trying to, trying to benefit from that. So that's what we did in Twitter. Uh, next trade, Tesla did a closing trade in Tesla. So this is an iron duck that we had on in Tesla. Looked like it was in good shape to potentially book a duck head, but Tesla, with, along with the rest of the market, just kind of got really weak and flushed through our downside break even. So we had to close this out, just took a loss on that Tesla iron duck. QQQ, so this is a, a, a rolling adjusting trade in these short call verticals that we've been rolling just to keep that short delta with that flush down in the market. We were over 50% of max profit on this piece, so we just extended duration, rolled that out in time. Uh, to, to keep that uh, as one of our short delta plays in our portfolio. So if we take a look at QQQ uh, and, and on that down move, it really benefited you know, a lot of our short delta plays. And so we were able to, uh, to lock that in and roll it out. So you can see now we've, we're up about 80, 80, 60, 70, 80 bucks since that roll. So looking for some more downside to benefit this particular piece. Next trade, XLK, another one of our short delta and very similar to, to the QQQs. This is a long, uh, long put vertical as opposed to a short call vertical, but very same on the risk profile. We we're over 50% of max profit on this piece. So we just locked in that, that, that uh, benefit and rolled it out to the next cycle. So if we take a look at XLK, you can see very similar. So we rolled it out to April. And, you know, we're up about $140 on this position since we did that, since we did that roll. And, we, and we've got a lot of, lot of room to the downside if things do continue to fall apart uh, in stocks. Next trade, opening trade in Roku. So this was a, an iron duck that we put on in Roku as Roku uh, came down, had a big down day uh, after it announced earnings. We put on an, an iron duck because the implied volatility was spiking the options were juicy and gives us a big buffer to the downside. Did this one with 10 days to expiration. So let's take a look at Roku. We've actually got a couple different positions on in Roku. Uh, here's the iron duck and you can see it's still just barely in the beak starting to enter the head. So we've got until uh, three six on this one. And this needs to go to today. Which is, okay. So anyway, so there's the Iron Duck. While we're here, we've also got a another kind of a long directional play. Now, we put this on before the down move so that we're a little, uh, we're a little down on this one. But this is one of those long call verticals where we've got defined risk, a very small amount. Uh, we've still got some time on this one. So there's some still some time that this thing could push up and get back into range. But it took a pretty heavy flush on that down move in, um, in Roku. So... Uh, but we've got two different positions on there. Yeah, on that on that drop after they announced their earnings, this thing just kind of started flushing lower. So, uh, so we're we're down on our, our long delta play, but we'll continue to manage and give it time. You got to give time for the probabilities to work out. You can't you can't just get scared out of trades. If you're getting scared out of a trade on something like this, that means you traded too large. So keep your position size in check, and you'll be just fine. Next trade, Baidu. We did an iron condor. So this is what I wanted to talk about because this is a little bit different uh, than a lot of trades that we do. A, we put this one on with 23 days to expiration. So it's not in that typical 30 to 60 day wheelhouse where we're typically selling premium. And the reason we're okay with doing this is this is kind of a, this is a, uh, it's an iron condor, but it's kind of a skewed iron condor. And so you almost can think of this as kind of a combination between an iron condor and an iron duck. And, and so the way, the way we did this is we're looking at this. I wanted to put on a, 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 an upside, a long bias trade in Baidu, but the implied volatility is so high that I also wanted to benefit 
if we get a contraction in implied volatility. So let's start with Baidu and take a look at the chart and I'll, I'll kind of explain what I'm talking about. It's kind of like we, we saw on Twitter, you know, had this big up move. We're starting to see this pullback. We wanted to get long for a potential continuation up to the upside. And at the same time, if you look at the implied volatility, the IV percentile was, was at 100 at the time we put this on. It's come down a little bit at 96. So we want to benefit from a contraction in implied volatility. So we took a position to kind of help hopefully benefit from both of those if they play out. Uh, and so we put on this skewed iron condor where, you know, price started right here. Now price has come down a little bit since we put this on. But price started about right here. So we had this big room to the upside if we do get a continuation up. And as implied volatility contracts, we would benefit from that as well. So gave uh, you know less risk to the upside, a little bit more to the downside. And we're also looking at this from a perspective of we're not going to take max loss on this. You know, we're, we're using $2,200 in buying cap capital, which is, which is also our max loss. Uh, but if this thing comes through and breaks through our downside break even, we're going to, you know, we're basically we, we took in a credit of $800 on this. Uh, so we would we would get out at around a loss of about 800 or we may give it a little bit more room. Uh, but if this thing doesn't bounce, you know, it, it kind of, you know, this is kind of a price peak. So this would be kind of the, the line in the sand. If it doesn't bounce on this level, there's probably lower prices to come. And so that's what we want to see here on that trade. So just kind of a skewed iron condor, a little bit different than what we do, but, uh, you know, kind of kind of sharing some some additional strategy with you there. Uh, next trade, SPX, Iron Duck. Uh, so this is one that we let expire. Booked a beak profit on this of 125. Uh, rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So the, another one of our short delta plays where as price came flushing down, we were over 50% of max profit on this piece. So we just extended duration, rolled this one out. Actually in this one, uh, as you can see here, uh, we, we, we stayed in the same cycle because uh, it happened so quickly that uh, we, we didn't want to roll out to a further uh, dated option cycle. So we just rolled our strikes down, stayed in that 50-day 50, 50 option cycle in Apple. So if we take a look at Apple, now Apple had a, uh, a decent little bounce a couple days ago, but then just kind of fell apart along with the rest of the market. And so you can see we're up about 50 bucks on this position since we did that roll and we got a lot of room to the downside if things do continue to move lower. Next trade, Amazon Iron Duck. Uh, this one was a little frustrating because we were so close to uh, booking a duck head, but then the market just fell apart and this thing flushed lower down to our, down to our exit point. So we had to close that one out for a loss in Amazon. Uh, Airbnb, this was one of our long delta plays that we were... Uh, we like to put these on kind of leading up to earnings, especially in a stock like Airbnb, which is getting a lot of buzz, a lot of hype. Uh, so a lot, we, we were, what we were anticipating was a potential up move into earnings. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get that. So we just closed it out before earnings took a little loss on that one. And then same thing with Donkey Kong. So this one was real close to break even. And then that last day right before earnings kind of moved a little bit lower. So we took a little loss on that one as well. Uh, but those are those long call diagonals I mentioned. And then uh, in Lyft, we did a, after they announced earnings, they moved above the expected move. And so we did a post-earnings trade like we teach in our earnings co course. In this case, we did a, a long call. Lyft is such a low price stock, kind of a $50 stock. So it made sense to just buy some deep in the money calls. Uh, in this case, price is holding really well, even though the rest of the market is flushing. Uh, price of Lyft has been holding really well. So just wanted to extend duration, give us a little bit more time to be right. Uh, on this trade. And so if we take a look at a chart of lift, well, let's look at the analyst tab first. So we, you know, we just rolled this. So it's pretty close to where we put it on. Uh, but if we look at a chart, you know, even with that big flush down in the market, you can see price is really held above the level that it was pre earnings. So it's just been consolidating, chopping around. And so we just want to give ourselves more time to be right on this trade. Uh, so assuming the market just doesn't completely fall apart, we should see a bounce in lift into next week and, and try to book a profit on that trade. So that's the, that's the plan on lift SPX opening trade. So we added a weekly double calendar in SPX as, uh, as price was bouncing, uh, on Friday, uh, we implied volatility was contracting. Uh, it fell apart later in the day, but, um, 
uh, but we got in uh, with implied volatility was was actually uh, contracting really well. And, and I got a, I got a couple of questions about this in the community because one of the criteria of trading red is is now that we want to see an IV percentile on this 21 day IV indicator. We want to see that under 50. Uh, and obviously the that it, it's above 50 while it was contracting is it down in kind of the 55 ish level. I think when we put this on, uh, you know, do you want to use that same criteria for weekly double calendars? And so my answer is this. There are some similarities between, the, you know, a weekly double calendar and a red trade, right? We're trading two different expiration cycles. But Tim Weiss has laid out a very specific criteria for trading red. And so if you're trading red trades, you need to follow that specific criteria. For the weekly double calendar, uh, while it does have a lot of similar characteristics, what we're trying to do is, is really we're trying to get in on a day when implied volatility is contracting. And so even though implied volatility is high overall, we, we, we entered on a day when implied volatility was contracting and, uh, and hopefully we'll benefit that. Because remember, implied volatility, even though it's at you know, the IV percentile on this 21-day uh, indicator is in the 60s or 70s, that doesn't mean it can't go to you know, 70 or 80 or 90 or 100 next week. And so we could still benefit. Now, if implied volatility contracts from here, if this market does just turn around and rip higher and implied volatility you know, tanks, is that going to hurt our weekly double calendar? Yeah, that's going to work against that trade. But uh, you know, just what I would say is don't mix criteria for different strategies. We have these multiple strategies with specific criteria. Follow the specific criteria for those trades and, and manage them um, as, as we teach as well. And that'll just kind of keep things separate. You don't want to you don't want to mix things because then you start to create a little bit of confusion and you start doing things, you know, based on, um, you know, criteria that you shouldn't. So I hope that makes sense. Um, today is the 27th. For some reason, my calendar was on the 20th. Okay. So here's the weekly calendar, weekly double calendar we just put on pretty close to where we, where we put it on, uh, you know, pretty centered. So uh, look forward to closing that out near expiration next week, assuming price stays in a decent range for us. Uh, gold iron condor. So we entered a new iron condor in GC, which is the futures contract for gold. So we take a look at GC. Applied volatility spiked. It, it wasn't necessarily near the, uh, and don't pay attention to the PL line because the futures are a little goofy after hours. We're not up 500 bucks on this trade already. We just put it on on Friday, but we are dead centered, so pretty close to where we put it on. And uh, nice wide range for gold to move around in. But if we take a look at GLD, which is the corresponding ETF, so you can look at the S and uh, so you can look at the IV percentile, wasn't quite at the 50 level, which is what we like to do to sell premium. But you can see it's at the top end of its range that we've seen in quite some time, and. I uh, had a big spike here recently, so just selling some premium, looking for a contraction in implied volatility to uh, to benefit that trade. All right, back to the alerts. Twilio was a closing trade, so this is another post earnings trade. Got caught in that flush down with the rest of the market, so we ended up just closing it out, taking a loss on that one. Uh, and then lastly, SPX. We closed out this weekly double calendar that had ex that was expiring uh, yesterday on Friday when we closed it. Uh, we were just looking for a little, little bit more bump in the market. We were, you know, we were in the profit. I was just waiting for a little bit more, and then the the market kind of fell apart later in the day. So we ended up taking a a, a loss on the trade, unfortunately. Uh, but that's kind of the fire you play with when you wait till the last minute to close these things out. Uh, it very well could have been a, a nice winner, but it just kind of uh, teeter totter moved the other way on us th at the at the last part of the day. So we ended up taking a loss on that one. So those are all of the alerts. Let's take a look at some of these other positions that we have. Uh, starting with ES. So this is a, a long put vertical that we have in ES. So this is another one of our short delta plays. You can see we're up about uh, 400 and some dollars since we did our last roll in ES. ZB, this thing did catch a nice bounce. Remember uh, last week in this, we adjusted, rolled it out, went inverted. And so, um, you know, this isn't taking into consideration the, the credit and the profits we already booked on, on those closed pieces. Uh, so it looks a little bit goofy, but nice bounce in bonds. Finally, this thing's the uh, bonds have just been on a real downhill slide. Uh, so nice relief from that slide in bonds. And we'll continue to manage our way out of this one. 
Uh, I already mentioned Apple. I mentioned Baidu. John Deere. So John Deere had, had another good earnings announcement. It's continued to move higher. This is one of our short delta plays. Uh, so this one's well out of range. We need some downside in DE to uh, to move down. I did get a question. I think it was from Andrew about, you know, on this, because they had good earnings, does it make sense just to close this out, take a loss and, you know, enter, re-enter or enter in something else else for short delta? And I would say you you certainly can do that. You know, I mean, if you're if you're anticipating that John Deere is going to have higher prices, um, then then you could certainly do that. We're just we're just staying mechanical. I mean, this is one tiny piece of our portfolio. This is one tiny piece of our overall short delta. And yeah, this thing's been working against us. Uh, but but looking at it from a contrarian standpoint, I would also say, I mean, you know, this thing has just been so strong that at some point it's going to come down. And so if I was looking at this chart and and looking for you know a potential contrarian play to add some short delta. I would say, yeah. I mean, John Deere would would be a you know a good potential candidate. So we're going to stay in it and and continue to to manage it that way. But but you also need to, you know, we're we're not saying you need to copy exactly what we're doing, uh, but you should do what what you think is best for your portfolio. Uh, DIA had a couple of big flushes the last couple of days. We've got a, a short delta piece in here, which is a short call vertical, uh, similar to some of our others, and you can see we're up a little bit of money. Sorry, having a little problems with my mouse here. Uh, up about 150 bucks since we did that last roll. Looking for some more downside to benefit that. Uh, eBay. Okay, so eBay, we had a couple of long calls. These were post-earning long calls. Let one of them expire at max loss. This other one's near max loss as well. We're going to give it to next week to see if it, it, it'll bounce. It kind of flushed down through our level uh, after that post-earnings play. Uh, we're, you know, we're coming down to a point where we might see a bounce. So just going to see if we get a little bounce and then close out the rest, uh, next week. So that'll be a, a loser overall. Uh, IWM, another short Delta play, another set of, uh, long put verticals here. This one, we are almost at 50% of max profit on this piece. Uh, we're up about at 408 bucks. So if it moves much lower, we'll go ahead and lock that in, roll that out to April into next week. Uh, I mentioned Roku, Rut. We've got an iron duck in Rut. Let me click off here. Click on our actual position. And so you can see prices hanging out right there in the duck head in Rut. SMH, we've got this short strangle that's been adjusted. Uh, nice down move, brought this thing closer to center. So we're up a little over a thousand bucks on this trade since our last roll. Uh, this is in March, so we'll be looking to roll out next week as we get close to that see we're at 20 you know on friday we were at 21 days so just giving it over the weekend to uh, collect a little bit more theta potentially and then we're going to roll out to april extend duration on that one i mentioned spx i mentioned twitter i mentioned xlk zoom zoom so zoom announces earnings on 3 1 after the market so that's monday so we did this uh this was another one of our long call uh diagonals kind of got caught up in the uh in the uh down move of the market. So we're, we're down a little bit on this one, but we're going to see if we get a little bit of a bounce on Monday and then just close this out. Might take a little loss on that one. So those are all the alerts. Those are all of our positions. Hope you guys have a good weekend and we will talk to you next week. Cheers.